One component of the area of study essay that we have to do is that you have to supply a related text that you're going to connect with the Tempest. And so we've got a few things that we uh, really need to consider when we're choosing our text. First of all, really, we have to think about what we're going to choose. Now, we're doing a play, and it's quite okay for you to choose another play, but generally, um, it's a good idea to pick another form as a means of um, just creating a point of difference in your essay. Uh, it's always good to, to be able to do that. So I've got up on the board there that you can choose a film, a novel, a play. It's very credible to use a picture book, um, and also um, for those students studying art, or if you have an interest in art, you can you can do an artwork or a suite of artworks. Uh, and, and many students have, or a number of students have done that um, in the previous years and done very, very well. Um, but, but essentially, any of those forms um, is equal. You know, it's not the case that if you do a um, particular type of text that you will be advantaged by doing that. But essentially what you want to do is you want to choose a quality text uh, you want to have a, a text that has been recognised as sophisticated, possibly that has artistic merit. So we can compare, you know, that in uh, a lot of Disney films there are uh, clear discoveries made, but they just don't have the, um, the, the quality of uh, sophistication in the ideas that would allow you to sustain them in a, in a band six response. Once, once you've uh, picked your text, uh, what you really have to do is um, identify the concept that you're going to explore that, that relates to discovery. Um, so that's obviously um, the thing that you're going to begin with, tra tracing the development of a central character and uh, you know a, a realisation or a discovery that they've occurred, um, that they've experienced. And it might be that um, they uh, experience uh, new um, horizons and um, as a result, they, um, from an experience, they, they gain a, a different uh, form of um, attitudes and insights and their values may change and, and what they do with that. Um, the other thing that um, might occur is that it might be uh, a younger character and so their discovery is, is a new awakening and then for other characters it may be a rediscovery. So it's just a matter of teasing out what it is that, um, that the character has um, come to learn. And, and really it's exploring the, the idea beyond that. So really immerse yourself in that concept and just take it to the, to the full extreme of, of what it is that, that they learn about the world or about themselves or about others. Now, um, once you've, you've settled on that, um, when you're exploring your text, you really have to be able to, to um, articulate the um, relevance of the text to the, the context of the time, how it's a reflection of the, the, uh, the values and attitudes or events that were occurring in the, either in the period in which the text was made or in the tech, when the, the text was set. Uh, that, that's really important and when we look at the Tempest, we're looking at colonialism or the reign of James I and looking at the, the political and social climate and all the values that were apparent in the Jacobean era and it's certainly what uh, you have to uh, acknowledge in the related texts as well. So you need to explore that a little bit too. Um, and you know obviously there are, there, there are many commentaries made by the, the author of the text. Now, um, we were saying at the start that it's good to have a different uh, form. So, because we're doing the Shakespearean drama, th then it, it is advisable to pick one of the other forms. And what um, you really need to do throughout your response is you need to be able to tease out the, the differences between um, how the discovery is shown in The Tempest through the form of a Shakespearean comedy and then whatever your other text is. So, for example, if it's a, a novel, then there are going to be significant differences to the, to the uh, production of a play. So uh, you really have to get in and um, demonstrate through the examples that you use uh, that, that that's how the, the idea has been shaped through the features of the form. Okay, and, and finally, possibly I could have ch spoken about this when I was talking at the top of point number one, and that is that what you want to do is you want to make connections to the Tempest. And some of those um, might be similarities, uh, and others may be differences. Well, you might find there's a blend of the two. Um, and it's quite okay to, to select texts um, where you're saying that the, uh, the process is completely different, or the outcome is completely different to the Tempest. 
But within doing that, you're going to make some um, observations about um, the development of the character of uh, whoever it is in your text and, and Prospero or one of the characters in the play. But you'll just make some subtle connections between the two. Um, so either way, similarities or differences are very, um, very uh, valid ways of doing that. An example of a related text would be uh, the novel Jasper Jones by Craig Silvey. Um, and um, basically what we uh, are going to do when we look at uh, the novel is we're going to trace the journey of the central character. So Charlie Buckton's the central character and he um, uh, you know, has that journey from innocence to understanding. It's that real coming of age type uh, story. And um, straight away we can see, unlike Prospero, uh, Charlie has to make sense of his world. He's a young boy, he's innocent and impressionable, and he's exposed to some harsh realities. And, you know, and that differs from Prospero, who is uh, very experienced in the world, and, you know, he, he um, prides himself on his um, level of knowledge and, you know, his practising of his art. So here's a nice way we can um, sort of make some differentiations between the text in relation to the, the concept. Um, and the novel is about power and its abuse, so those who, who um, are in positions of authority uh, use the power to their, to their own means and um, straight away I'm sure you'll be able to see a, a relationship to what occurs with Prospero when he's the Duke of Milan and then when he's on the island manufacturing his revenge. Um, so back to the novel, um, the novel really explores that disconnect between the law and justice and, um, and really what um, unfolds during the novel is that um, through um, Charlie's um, sort of forced relationship with, with Jasper Jones in particular, um, through um, having that first-hand experience of racism uh, and uh, you know, the, the mistreatment of, of Jasper, Charlie, uh, he learns a lot and it opens his eyes to the realities of um, the, the world that he lives in. So we would explore um, that as, as our central concept. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the, um, the context of the time. So the novel was set in 1960s uh, country Western Australia. And um, Sylvie um, was very critical of this notion that the 1960s was an era where Australia finally grew up. And he, he, did, he, re he rejects that, that premise. Um, and he paints a picture of a very closed mind country town it's in the Vietnam era, um, so um, the, um, the the racism that's evident is um, is uh, you know explored in the film. Uh, sorry, in the novel, it's not not, not done so well in the in the film, um, and, and certainly it, it looks at the uh, culture of alcohol abuse um, and the misogynist, um, sexist sort of uh, culture that that was inherent in that in that nineteen um, sixties um, realm. And, and, and so we, we would use examples, I suppose, that would illustrate some of that in the, in the sense of um, exploring the, the abuse of power. Um, and, and then as we're doing that, we would look at um, how the novel is able to do that. So we'd, we'd um, look at the form and find examples that we could, we could explore that would, would allow us to show that, that Charlie is moving from that point of innocence to, to understanding. So um, one of the things that, that is used is the intertextual references to To Kill a Mockingbird. And, um, you know, um, Charlie really spends a lot of time um, thinking about Atticus Finch and looking at him as a role model and comparing him to his father and that's setting up his moral compass I suppose um, and um, there's a quote about that Mark Twain says something about courage in the face of fear or something like that so um, really um, from his uh, um, love of reading um, he's able and through the intertextuality to, to kill a mockingbird he's able to talk about how he, he finds that courage to to stand up against what is uh, essentially wrong <clears throat> he also uses that great uh, and very comic conversation with with uh, Jeffrey about the who was better between Batman or Superman and um, that reinforces that notion of um, you know that that it's common everyday people who uh, make a difference if, if you stand up for what you believe in. 
At the end of the novel, there is also the mythological illusion um, that's present with the, the fire when the, when the house is burnt down. And so rising from the ashes of the, the, um, the, the burnt down house is the hope for the future. And so we can really see that um, you'd be able to make some really good um, observations and comments on uh, the abuse of power and, and then having that positive message at the end. But done through the, um, <clears throat> the means of, of a, a novel, um, you know, which, you know, completely, completely, well, not completely differently, but, but significantly differently to, to how it's presented in The uh, Tempest. And then finally, I've, I've got down the bottom here, we've been talking about um, the differences, I suppose, between Prospero and Charlie, but we can look at the outcome of the, the uh, both stories and see the similarities. And so, um, really, um, in dealing with... Um, People who are abusing power and um, and um, you know and that that are um, you know doing things for for unjust means, I suppose um, that that both stories really um, reinforce the the uh, the importance of developing relationships and being able to trust people and and understanding what's really important in life. So one thing that you can do is that you can then come back to um, similarities and things that, that, that actually tie the text together and it's a really nice way to do that. And I think that having a, an idea, a thread that you can weave through your story, or through your essay or your speech, like this one about the abuse of power, gives you a really nice lens for you to be able to, um, to explore those texts. And they're the, they're the texts uh, and the responses that, that generally uh, perform um, you know, in those higher bands. So here's a starting point. Really what you need to do is you need to sit down with a pen and paper and, and actually <clears throat> plot out of what it is that, that you want to explore and then go finding connections between the texts.